Hey guys, just got back from the garage, finished a laser cutting project and things did not go as planned. So... Cool. All right, before I just freak out, I guess you guys deserve a little bit of backstory. Well, this is a little skate deck that I designed straight out of high school. I made it at my college's laser lab and I just thought it would be cool to use a thumbprint as the grip on the board since, you know, digits are used for gripping things. I don't know, I thought it was fun. And uh, yeah, everything was nice except for the fact that I just made this out of regular plywood so despite how thick it is, it didn't last very long before it developed a crack. But just recently I was sent a laser engraver by GearBest and not the little dinky one I used before, but a pretty big one, 200 by 300 millimeter volume. So I thought I would buy myself a brand new pre-made deck. This one is made out of bamboo, pretty cool. And yeah, I was like, cool, I'll laser it myself and I can revisit this old project of mine. How exciting. Unfortunately, I only had one shot at this and some things didn't go as planned. So yeah, things ended up not working exactly how I wanted them to. But up until the point of failure, there were a lot of good things happening. Things were going right. So I think among my successes and failures, there's still a lot to learn in this video. So check it out. So here's the machine. And this is the A3 laser engraver. And this is the five watt version, which is the most powerful. And like a lot of 3D printers on GearBest, this does come as a kit that requires some assembly. But considering this only moves in two axes versus three, it's a little bit of an easier build. The assembly was no big deal, but what did throw me off was the software. No matter what state the software said the laser was in, when I turned it on, it would go full blast and just start burning into my cardboard. That ended up being an issue with the firmware, which needed to be updated. And I was able to do that after following some leads on the AlexCam forum, which is the software that is used for this machine. So once I had that figured out, things went a little more smoothly. Here the laser is in its weak mode, so I'm able to dial in the focus without burning my fingers off. Here's that Alex Maker software, and I mostly just used this pick car feature, which takes your JPEG images and converts them into something that the laser can engrave. So I started out by doing some tests with the Make Anything logo, and there's four options down here for different ways to laser. The way this point mode works is by doing laser pulses, and basically, doing one pulse for each pixel of the image. So you can adjust the resolution from 1 to 20 lines per millimeter, and you can also adjust how long the laser pulse lasts. But I was just using the minimum of one millisecond since I do have that most powerful 5.5 milliwatt laser. This point method works great. The only problem is it's really slow since it's doing individual pulses for each dot. Oh, and I also had to rig up this little string looped around the cable and going all the way up to the ceiling just to hold the cable out of the way. Little pro tip there. The next mode is scan, which is essentially the same exact thing, except it can vary the strength of each pulse if you have a grayscale image to create a gradient. And that's good for lasering photographs and things like that, but I'm not really doing that. Next is outline, which just follows the outline of any black part of the image. So you can see the completed version on the left of the laser right now. And this one that I'm doing right now is a little too strong, but basically it just follows a continuous path and the laser doesn't turn off. Finally, there's the real point mode, which was very promising. It works the most like a 3D printer where the laser stays on and it just sweeps back and forth, filling in the black parts of the image. The only problem was when this was traveling longer stretches in the X direction, it would kind of fade out as you can see inside of that black triangle. So with that, the point mode ended up being the best for me, and that's what I'm gonna use for this project. Now to put a design on my skateboard, the first thing I need is a reference of the board itself. So I set up my cutting mat here since it has measurements for reference, and I put my board on top of these blocks so that it's perfectly level. Then I ran upstairs, and I zoomed in to take a photo from the second story because telephoto lenses, when they're zoomed in, have a lot less distortion than a wide angle lens. Here's the photo that I snapped, and I took that into the camera raw, fixed the distortion, and made it nice and contrasty so it would be easier for me to trace. Then I took it into Illustrator where I can scale the image so that it's the correct size. 
The way I did that at first was creating a one by one inch square so that I could line it up with the one inch squares on my cutting mat. But I quickly realized that I would get a much more accurate measurement if I used a larger reference like the entire cutting mat, which has this 17 by 11 inch rectangle. So I scaled the image to match that rectangle, and then I'm just gonna take the image, lower the opacity, and use the pen tool to trace out the outline, as well as the holes for the screws. Now I can hide the image, and I've got just a perfect outline of the skateboard itself, onto which I can align my image. The first time I made this board, I just used a random image of a thumbprint that I found online, but to make this one super unique and literally an individual board, I decided to use my own thumbprint simply by using an ink pad and stamping my thumb onto a piece of paper. I did that several times since it's pretty hard to get a really clean thumbprint and I wanted a few options to choose from. As you can see, a few of the prints came out really well, so if you're planning on stealing my identity, it's probably a good idea to take a screenshot of this. I threw my thumbprints onto this flatbed scanner scanned them in at a nice high resolution, and brought those into Photoshop, where I did some level adjustments to get a really contrasty image. I decided to use this print right here since it's one of the cleaner ones, and it's also nice and long, so it'll match the length of the board a little better. I isolated that, desaturated it, and then I just used the brush tool to clean things up a little bit where they were a little bit scrappy. Once that looked good, I copied it and brought it into Illustrator, where I'm gonna use the image trace feature to get a vector image that's perfectly black and white. I'll open up the image trace settings and mess with them just to get it nice and high fidelity. And then I'm gonna expand it and I can rearrange it and scale it up until it's exactly how I want it to be on the board. As you can see, that shape of the print was perfect to fit between the trucks of my skateboard. Pretty ideal. So I've got my thumbprint at the right size now relative to the skateboard, and I'm just gonna change the size of this artboard to make it a nice even number, since that's what I'm gonna reference when bringing it into the laser engraving software. I'll export that as a JPEG at 264 millimeters wide, and then when I bring it into the Alex Maker software, I can have it match that same width. As I said, the point mode is working best for me, and I'm gonna use a resolution of six millimeters per line since that was pretty much the lowest resolution that looked good and I do want to use a lower resolution since this is a large image and it's already going to take a really long time. So here we have it in the software, and I don't really need to do much here, except I'm going to increase the laser power from the near minimum for cardboard up to the maximum for this bamboo skateboard deck. All right, the software stuff is good to go, but I also had to print these little stilts since I need to fit the skateboard underneath the whole thing. So I made these kind of modular blocks. They're not super steady, but I think they'll do the job. I set three of those under each foot, and that's gonna hold up my laser just so that I can fit the skateboard underneath. We're about ready, but of course, I gotta put on my respirator since this skateboard is laminated, so I don't want any of those fumes that are coming off of it. I don't want bamboo fumes in general. And of course, eye protection is a must because this machine uses a really bright violet laser. Here I'm testing out a smaller version of the design on this piece of bamboo flooring. And I tested it at an angle as well, since the skateboard itself isn't completely flat and I wanted to make sure that the image would still be clean, even on the curved parts. And it worked really well, so nothing to do now but commit and start burning it into this skateboard. So I put down those blocks again to keep things as flat as possible, and on top of that I put my skateboard deck. I'll move the laser head as close to the center of the skate deck as possible, and then I'm gonna refocus the laser to match this new height. I put a piece of paper between the laser and the skate deck just to make sure I get a really crisp, fine dot so that this laser is perfectly focused. After that, I'll use the preview script in the software, which draws a bounding box with the laser around where the image is gonna be engraved. And then I can just manually move it around until that box seems symmetrical and centered. Once I did that several times and made sure everything is aligned just how I want it, I went ahead and hit start. Thus begins the slow but fascinating process of lasering this skate deck. Everything was looking great. The laser was engraving at the right depth, everything looked nice and dark, and I thought it would be a walk in the park from here. Unfortunately, this doesn't run on an SD card. It has to be plugged into the computer, and even though I set it to stay awake, 
my computer did end up falling asleep, which caused the laser to freeze in one spot and burn a hole nearly all the way through my skateboard. So it created this really dark, ugly burn mark, and yeah, that was a bummer. Luckily nothing had moved, so I was able to just restart the script, and I was using the weak laser mode here, and once it got back to where it failed, I just switched back to the powerful laser so it could continue the drawing. That actually worked relatively well, but then I made an even bigger mistake and moved my laptop, which yanked on the USB cord and knocked the whole laser machine off of those extension feet that I built. And from there, well, recovery was not easy. I tried just manually adjusting the board and lining things up so that I can kind of get it continuing with just a slight mistake. But the problem is when I first pulled on that USB cable, it kind of messed up the connection, which was pretty weak to begin with. And after just fiddling around with it a bit, it stopped working altogether and I was not able to get a signal from my computer to the machine. Things were definitely not looking good at this point. So as I say, when all else fails, go abstract. I decided to just complete the job manually, but moving this thing around and getting a clean line is definitely not easy. So I wasn't about to attempt to draw a thumbprint. Instead, I decided to create some kind of glitchy artwork by starting at those thumbprint lines and just zigzagging down and trying to create some kind of interesting chaotic art. Luckily, there are buttons on top of the laser itself that let you switch between the laser being off, being in weak mode, and being at full strength. So I was able to have a little bit of control with that. As you can see, this was producing a lot of smoke, so the respirator was definitely a must, and my eyes were even starting to water a bit while I was standing in front of this. There's a small fan on the unit to cool the laser itself, but in the future I would definitely use a desk fan to blow the smoke away from me. And I was already doing this in my garage with the door all the way open. Ventilation is definitely a must. I finished up those squiggles and I decided to add a few extra lines and flourishes on either end since this was already a rescue mission. So I just created these back and forth lines to kind of frame that glitchy artwork. I was trying to be pretty straight with these lines, but they still turned out rather squiggly. So drawing nice clean images with this manual technique isn't gonna work really well. Although it might be pretty awesome to mount this laser onto some kind of a handheld unit and use it more like a pen. Maybe I'll do that if I can't get this machine working again. Alas, here's my finished work. It's squiggly, it's crazy, it's not what I meant for it to be, but at least it is still an extremely unique skateboard. Like I said, and as you saw, Things didn't exactly go to plan. First I burnt a giant hole in the board and then it fell over and then it just died. So I had to go ahead and do things a different way. I guess it's not too bad. Things could have been worse. I mean, that hole is still pretty unsightly, but hey, I've got a skateboard and I can still ride this thing. So I don't know if you guys have ideas of what I can do to maybe add on to this. I think some painting would look cool. Yeah, let me know. Yeah, so, big surprise. I'm human, I make mistakes. Ah, oh, well. You know, I actually got pretty close to finishing, though. I've got the thumbprint there, and maybe someday I'll buy myself another deck and give this another go. I think I've inhaled enough bamboo fumes for today, so it's time to temporarily throw in the towel. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay persistent and stay inspired.